Patients. And we have Adrian Holovati talking about extracting musical information from sound. Take it away, Adrian. what we'll be uh, analyzing today. It's a really cool uh, solo guitar piece. I'm deliberately starting with a solo guitar piece because it's uh, relatively easier, easier from uh, the context of uh, automatically figuring out the underlying music because things get way more intense when you have multiple instruments happening at the same time. Uh, with just a solo instrument, it's actually, there's a, a reasonable degree of accuracy. So to start uh, hacking on this, we. Basically, you just have to do two things. Install uh, Pi Echo Nest, which is the Python binding for the Echo Nest API. And then you get an API key from developer.echonest.com. That's free for non-commercial use. Uh, I don't know what the terms are for commercial use. So uh, what you basically do is import a bunch of libraries. Uh, most importantly, this function called track from file. And then you set your API key, of course, and then you grab your MP3 as a file object and just send it to track from file, uh, the function, and you get this magical track object. 
And that has, it's just like packed with joy and love and all sorts of cool stuff about this song, and that's what we're going to be talking about. So, uh, some basics. Uh, well, let's just do a dir on it to see what's in there. There's a lot of stuff. I don't expect you to read all of that. Uh, but some, it's all sorts of stuff like the loudness of the song. There's something called danceability, which is a number that tells you how danceable the song is. Uh, some more uh, sound-related metadata, like the sample rate, the quality of the, the encoding. Uh, some syncing stuff, if you're syncing two songs together that are same, same recording. But the most interesting stuff is the musical stuff, which I'll talk about now. Uh, the, the basics, the, the basic musical information about the track, uh, I think the most important things are the key and the tempo. So you, if you just do track.key, you get a number between 0 and 11 inclusive, and that just translates to uh, 0 is the key of C, natural, then it goes up, C sharp, D, E flat, all the way to 11 for B. So for this song, it said it was a 9, which is A, and it's actually right. So OK, cool. Uh, then you get a confidence measure of 0.6. Uh, in my experience, I generally ignore anything that's below 0.5, uh, but it's very wishy-washy. Most of this stuff is like confidence levels. You don't really know what, what's good enough for you versus what's good enough for your application, whatever. Uh, but my rule of thumb is 0.5 or higher. Uh, then you get the tempo. Track.tempo, this is 120 beats per minute. And then you also get a confidence number for that. Uh, but now let's get into the interesting stuff. So when you do track.sections, you get a uh, list of dictionaries. And each one is a section of the song. And a section of the song is, it sort of has nebulous definition. It's basically like an interesting, like self-contained moment of the song. So it might be chorus versus verse, if, if the, music, the dynamics of the music change a lot. I don't know, I've, I've seen a lot of different stuff. It's not always that great, uh, but these numbers don't really mean anything. Let's see what they uh, look like actually with this song. So, so here you're going to see the section changes. So it was kind of a different part of the song. But it actually changed a little late, in my opinion. So with a lot of these things, it's kind of a few seconds off, but maybe it gives you some, like a, a gray area, you know, loosey-goosey kind of thing. Let's see this here. Okay, that's, that's not a section at all, uh, but it had a very low confidence rate. That was only 0.2 out of 1. Anyway, that gives you a sense of sections. Uh, I thought that maybe that was uh, not a very dynamic song because it's just a solo guitar, so it, it's not like there's a quiet part and it's like da -da -da on the verse. So I, I wanted to take another song that has a little more variation and see uh, how the section stuff happens. Can you all hear the music, by the way? Cool. So there the section changes. Again, that's just kind of cool. But here, this is where the section really should change, but it didn't, didn't pick that up. So here we have another change. So it kind of got to the very... Okay, interesting. Uh, this particular song has a bunch of sections. So, like, so that's the solo. This is like the final intro or the final outro. So it gives you some, like, in big, wide swaths, you know, the, very, the, the sections of the tune. Now let's get even more granular and interesting. You can get the bars of the song. So uh, the, the measures, in other words. Again, I can show you this data. It's just uh, you get a list of dictionaries with uh, how long it is in seconds, when it starts, how far into the song, and then the confidence level. There are 273 bars in this song, so you're dealing with a lot of data. Let's see. Uh, oh, and also there's this thing called a tatum, which is uh, the lowest regular pulse of the music. Uh, it's named after Art Tatum, the great jazz piano player. And it, it basically is a section of a bar. Uh, but this stuff most, mostly makes sense when you take a look at it. So I'll 
give you the same song. You have bars. It's the bars it's detected are the first track, and then the Tatums are the second. So the bar is actually kind of off. It should be like. But it's okay, you can maybe do some rough calculations based on it. Next is my absolute favorite thing, segments. Now this is every uh, relatively uniform part of the music. So in practice it means every note uh, or every drum beat or anything. It's, it's like the, the most atomic part of the music. If you could do just track dot segments, you get this gigantic list where every uh, element of the list is this dictionary, again, with this duration when it starts and the confidence, plus some more stuff, dun dun dun, which we'll get, in the, get to in a couple minutes. Uh, this song has 437 segments. It's a lot of stuff. And let's see what that looks like on this. So this is really cool. It's like every note, right? It, it's isolated, all those things. So that's pretty good, right? You know, detecting that stuff. It's a little, little fiddly because this uh, particular recording has echo applied to the guitar, so it, the echoes come off as uh, separate segments. So here, these little echoes, those were separate segments. And here, this was actually two notes audibly, but it only detected it as one segment. So it's, it's okay, it gets you maybe, in my experience, 80 or 90% of the way there, but you still need to manually futz with some of this stuff. Uh, then there's loudness. Uh, so for every one of those segments that we just looked at, uh, you can get loudness information, three little, little, parameter, three little things here. Uh, the loudness in decibels at the start of the segment, uh, the, the top loudness across the whole segment, so the maximum loudness, loudness max. And then how far into the segment do you have that loudness point? And what I personally use this for is uh, to, to get a, a sense of the loudness over time. I don't really use it for like music transcription. Now pitches are actually, I lied earlier, this is actually my favorite thing. So for, for every segment in, the, in that huge dictionary, I, I told you I was going to talk about some extra stuff, you also get this pitches key, which gives you a list of 12 uh, numbers. And again, they're ordered from C natural to B natural. And that, uh, each one of those is the, the amount of that pitch in that segment. So you can basically use that. Uh, here's a little trick. You can make an array of all the keys and use Python zip function, and then you see the key of C only had 0.3, but key B had 1.0. Oh, that probably means that in this, this particular segment, you have the note B. And then also on this one, we had A flat, which is 0.8. Pretty, pretty uh, high probability that there's an A flat note in there. So I have this highly advanced algorithm for determining the pitch of a segment. <laughs> I basically look at any any one of those pitches, if it's above 0.8, I uh, include it. So for this particular segment, there's an A flat note and a B playing at the same time. Now let's take a look at our song with that data in there. So we're just playing the pitch for each one of these things. This is actually very accurate. Now this part is really cool. It's a chromatic thing. For those of you who are musicians, you'd notice that. And it actually picked that up. So it goes C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, E. So uh, this is a, a nice start for automated music transcription. And it, it's trivial to convert that into uh, sheet music or in a guitar player's case, guitar tab. Of course, you don't have the octave, uh, but you, can, you might be able to get it in some other way. So that's uh, underlying note information. Then we have timbre, which is this really weird 
kind of nebulous, really intense concept. It's the, the quality of the sound. So it's uh, the, the color of the sound. There's a different way it's been described. The color of the sound, the, the just, you know, when you think, ask yourself, what differentiates the sound of a horn of a trumpet from a piano or from a guitar? It, it's, that's the timbre, you know. It, it's hard to, hard to uh, describe. So you get these 12 magic numbers for every one of those segments. And uh, I've been trying to reverse engineer these things for years, and I still don't know what the hell they mean. Uh, but uh, I have a couple of hints from their sparse documentation. Now, uh, sorry? The documentation is beautiful. The documentation is beautiful. OK. No comment. <laughs> what I've done here is, so we have those 12 numbers. Uh, I've, I've color-coded the segment based on that number, uh, based on its range, and I can just sort of get a sense of what they mean. Does anyone know? I don't. Uh, no, uh, the documentation says that number one is loudness, so you can kind of see, uh, let's see here. It gets a little darker here. So this one is a little softer than this one. And indeed, that's soft. That's loud. Uh, the second number is, is brightness, according to documentation. So this is very bright. This isn't. This is, uh, the third one is flatness. Attack is the fourth one. And these, the rest of these, uh, I will probably, uh, until my dying day, never figure it out. Uh, but it's interesting to futz with. So putting it all together, we have uh, I included four tracks here. The sections, the bars, the tatums, and then the pitches. So you end up getting kind of a cool representation of your song. Now, what can we actually do with this data? Uh, so I personally use it for transcribing. I'm going to show you a couple of projects that other people have done and then take questions. So uh, one of the original things I pointed out is that it, you can get the key of the song. Uh, so was, this guy, Matt Ogle, Ogle made a, a hack where you uh, enter your last FM username, and it scans your songs and tells you which key most of your songs are in. Uh, in interesting, not necessarily useful, but you can do it. Uh, then uh, Paul, a guy who works at the Echo Nest, uh, have you guys heard of this concept of the loudness war, where uh, people are saying, oh, recorded music these days is just uh, mixed really, really loud, and, and people care more about it being loud and, and popping as opposed to having dynamics? Uh, well, you can use this API to uh, actually determine that in your song. So uh, this is Dave Brubeck's take five. And what we're doing here is basically for each segment, uh, or what Paul did is for each segment, you take the loudness information and just plot it over time. Pretty simple. The hard part is getting that underlying audio data, but that's been taken care of by the API. So here's take five, an old jazz standard. And you can see there's a pretty high variation of loudness over time. Uh, compare that to like Stairway to Heaven, where it gets louder and builds over time, and then finally, and she's by a stairway. <laughs> I hope that that part is cut out of the video. <laughs> uh, and, but then compare that to like Metallica, of a recent Metallica <laughs> uh, album, and it's just boop, flat. So uh, another thing that you can do is click track detection, which you can go to the Echo Nest site and, uh, and enter a song name yourself. So here's uh, Minor Swing by uh, Django Reinhardt, a jazz musician named after a web framework. Uh, and you can see, <laughs> you can see that the, uh, the tempo kind of you know, oscillates. These, this was recorded in the 1930s. They didn't have a click track. Click track, for those of you who don't know, 
it's an, a thing that you listen to that's very steady metronome beat, so you know that you're playing in time. Before that existed, you had to use your brain and your sense of time. And uh, so you can see that in, in this particular recording, the track, so what we're doing is looking at that segment data and seeing how long they last, basically, and, and sort of smoothing the curve a little bit. So that, that's a nice natural thing. Then you have a Nickelback song, and you can definitely tell that they use a click track because the uh, lengths of the segments are basically all the same. My favorite, uh, well, I think the, the, I'm a big Beatles fan, and then I think the Ringo's best performance is on Rain, so I was curious as to how he kept time. It's actually all over the place <laughs> on this one. <laughs> now, uh, here's a, a, a hack I really love by, a, again, a guy called Paul who works at the Echo Nest. And what he did was he took segments from a Nickelback song and replace them in other parts of the song. He, he replaced the segments that sounded the most like them, if that makes any sense. Because Nickelback, if, if you don't know, has been criticized for where, having every song sound the same. Uh, so he took, sec say, say, you know the, the timbre information, you can basically detect timbres that are basically the same kind of sound, the color of sound, and he just automatically took this one and put it here because that is a very similar thing. Anyway, I'll just let the video. And he also did that with the video, which, which is really awesome. And it's surprisingly musical, like, you don't necessarily know that he did that. So, it's awesome. Google, you can watch the whole thing. It's Nickelback to Bickleneck by Paul Lemire. Uh, you can also use this stuff to generate new songs. So, uh, there's more cowbell.dj that uses the same API that's available to you to uh, add cowbell on the beats, and it just finds the beats and, and adds cowbells at those particular moments. Then there's the swinger, which will take segments and reduce the first half, or maybe expand the first half and reduce the second half to make things swing. And this is a Daft Punk song around the world, and it's very like four, four, do, 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 but here it's swinging. Not, not the best example. <laughs> get out of this. No idea how to get out of that thingy. There we go. So, uh, and then someone made the D-Swinger. I don't know if I can show you that because we're running out of time. But there are a couple of other libraries if you don't want to use this thing. Uh, there's something called Marcias. I'm sure I'm bastardizing the pronunciation. I've never been able to install it. How's that for a glowing recommendation? But it exists. Uh, and there's a VAMP, which is a really cool suite of plugins that do all these different things for audio, all sorts of diversity of things. And there's Obio, another uh, Python library for getting at this underlying musical data. Uh, thanks for listening. And we have, we have time for questions, right? Cool. Any questions? I can't guarantee I can answer them. Yeah. Can you tell me what was the... There's a mic over there. Can you use it, please? Can you tell me what was the visualization that you used for actually the music and the information that you got from the uh, Yeah, I meant to mention that. Uh, this, uh, he is asking what visualization I used to have the... Uh, sound this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sound and the annotations. Mm -hmm. I made this. Uh, it's a part of a side project I'm working on. Cool. Uh,
<laughs> What's going on? Uh, it's, it's Flash. Are you sure you want it? <laughs> I actually learned Flash to do this. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's my own thing. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, how well does it do on uh, detection of percussion versus uh, melody? Uh, good question. How well does it do on percussion? Actually, much better than, uh, uh, than melodic stuff because it's very obvious like that a drum hit, you know, it's, it's a very atomic thing, if that makes any sense. So uh, I put in just like a, an Indian kind of just percussive thing and it was like spot on. Of course, it doesn't, there's no pitch information, but yeah, it's just like every beat was pretty much right on. And it can distinguish like snare from bass? You might be able to use that timbre information for that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so I, I might, have, might have missed this, but can I get a, this as a VST plugin? Do you know VST? I don't know. No. It's like for digital audio workstations. Uh, okay. You know, no, don't know. Okay. If, if it doesn't exist, I'm sure you could write one. So for the pitch analysis, you said it um, breaks things into 12 tones, the, the naturals. Is there any way to specify a different pitch set to analyze from? I don't know. OK. Uh, I think there's some Echo Nest guys here that might be able to answer. Repeat the question. Oh, is it possible to use a different pitch set in the pitch detection? That's a really good question. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I guess I'll look at the code. <laughs> That's a really good question. I'll email the guy who knows. Okay. Find me after. Thanks. Okay. How does it yes. handle uh, compound or irregular meters? Does it have any experience with that? I haven't had an experience with that. I haven't had any experience. The, qu the question was, how does it handle irregular meters? Uh, that reminds me of the old joke, how does a rock drummer play in seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> but I don't know. That stuff scares me. I've never actually used it on. Yeah. Is that it? Okay, thanks, guys.